David Dobrik is one of YouTube's biggest personalities. His channel has nearly 15 million subscribers and over 5 billion views. And yes, I said billion. The guy's unstoppable. And another thing that doesn't seem to be stopping is his cash flow. I know the transition there wasn't the most creative, but I can't take it back now, so you gotta deal with it. We recently did a Rich Life video on David for the main channel, so you can check that out after this one. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at the top 10 most interesting things inside of David's mansion. David's nearly 3,000 square foot, four bedroom, four bathroom LA home is reportedly worth around $2.5 million and has some amazing features. But I have a feeling the value of the home may be depreciating after some of the activities that go on in David's living room. It seems like David had a new beach themed living room for a day. My God. And then David's entire house was ruined by a science experiment. Three, two, one, <laughs> go! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, not really ruined and not really the entire house. It was just for a day and it was just the ceiling in the living room. But the ceiling did look like it had Chick-fil-A sauce on it for at least a day. And honestly, it's kind of making me hungry now. Uh, no! <laughs> Oh my god. And they blew some more stuff up in the living room. Two, one, go. It's in, it's in. Oh, it's shit. In. Oh my god. 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 <laughs> Man, this guy will let his friends do anything in his house. I got a powder shooter. Can I pop it on you? No. It's basically Leon, just. Turn this. No, direction. don't. Don't, don't, don't. Wait, don't. Oh! I barely let my friends walk into my home with their shoes on, but that also could just be the Canadian in me. What's going on, good people in the comment section? My name is Jeremy Hecht. I hope you're having one heck of a day, and I'll be your host for today's video. David recently did a full house tour with Architectural Digest and showed off pretty much every aspect of his house, but there were some pretty interesting things in his crib, and I wanted to highlight them in this video. I'm gonna walk you through what I think are the 10 coolest things in David's new house. Now, this is a personal list, so you can disagree, agree, or be somewhere in the middle, but you gotta let me know what you think should be at number one in the comments down below, and guess what you think I'll pick. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, and let us know who you want us to cover next in the comments down below, as always. Also, before we start, I just wanna say, leave David's house alone, okay? There are people breaking in, putting it up for sale, and stalking the guy, and it's ridiculous. Just let the man live his life. All right, let's get into the video. At number 10, we have Chipotle. One thing that you can be sure to find in David's house is an inordinate amount of Chipotle, and I can't say I blame him. Of course you know that he's sponsored by Chipotle, and he revealed in his house tour that he has a card allowing him to buy basically unlimited Chipotle, and I think that's pretty cool. What restaurant will you guys want unlimited food from? For me, it would have been Chick-fil-A up until yesterday when I tried Popeye's chicken sandwich, and I might have to roll with Popeye's now. It was amazing. Not an ad for Popeye's, but Popeye's, if you're watching, you can sponsor me, and I will talk about your sandwiches and videos if you give me them for free. I have the card where I can get unlimited Chipotle throughout the year, and they also have an option where I can cater food for free. So we catered it, so after the shoot, you guys can have some. Or maybe I can just finish it up, I don't care. At number nine, we have his gumball machine that doesn't work. This is a gumball machine we have. From the day we bought it, it hasn't worked. It just sits here, and if you want a gumball, you have to go up here. But when it does work, I'm sure it looks really cool. It looks cool just like sitting there. To have a gumball machine is impressive enough in itself. I mean, that's pretty much every nine-year-old's dream. Although I didn't chew gum, so maybe not every nine-year-old. But it is a feat that very few ever achieve. But to have a gumball machine that doesn't work takes even more dedication because you have to be thinking about it constantly. When you want a piece of gum or your friend comes over, they want a piece of gum and you have to tell them it doesn't work. And then you think, okay, I have the money to fix it, but it's gotta be pretty low on your priorities when you're doing award shows and doing voiceovers for Angry Birds. Oh, it's on! That's me. Oh, it's on! <laughs> it's legendary that David had a premiere for the one line that he had in the movie, and I have a feeling that line is actually gonna be exactly the thing that everyone remembers from the movie in future years, and they might forget most of the other lines. Latest merch with my line. And now we're going to a movie theater that they rented out for me and my friends just to go see the movie a little bit earlier. All right, guys, here it comes, here comes my seat. Get ready, get ready. Oh, it's on. Yeah! 
At number eight, we have David's clickbait LED sign. The sign doesn't need much explanation. I just think it's dope to have an LED sign in your living room. I'm not sure what mine would say if I did one, um, and I don't think my girl would be pleased if I ruined the aesthetic of our wall with one. But in David's house, it actually looks fire. That's my clickbait sign. I really like LED signs because I feel like they're like a really easy way to like decorate a house and make it feel like it's like a lot cooler than it actually is. Clickbait is my merch. I'm actually wearing it right now, but you can't really tell because it's black on black. Number seven, we have the 10 million subscriber play button he has. And I think we need to take a moment to acknowledge how crazy 10 million subscribers is. I mean, there are a few people who ever reach 1 million subs on the platform, but to get 10 is pretty incredible. And so I see why he holds that plaque, not plaque, play button so close to his heart. I came home and my entire house was wrapped in like wrapping paper like it was Christmas. And all my friends from my hometown and from LA came to surprise me and it was like a really, really big fun thing. At number six, we have David's fish. I just think it's underrated to have a fish in 2019. I had a fish way back in the day. Well, actually two fish. Uh, fishes, fish, fishes. One was named Speedy, one was named Wibbly. Speedy was obviously the faster one. Wibbly can swim as well. But anyways, back to David. I also think it's, you know, crazy how he casually name drops the Jenner Kardashian clan in this. Charlotte, Kaya, Kendall, and Harry came by and they gave me this fish when we surprised my friend Zane for his birthday. Um, we surprised him with Kendall Jenner because he really likes her. So she came over and we threw like a big party for him here and that was a lot of fun. And this is all I have from that day that I remember because it was, it was so crazy. At number five is the disposable cameras he keeps lying around for people to take pictures on. I think that's an amazing idea that I've never seen someone do before. So it's up there on my list just for purely creativity. So it's up there on my list purely for creativity reasons. I have a new thing that I've been trying out. I just take pictures of like random things that are happening. So this, this would be a perfect moment. The flash is enough. At number four, we have Black Mirror. Not the Netflix show, and not the phones we use that the show's title is actually based on. Yeah, I bet some of you out there didn't know that the show was named after the phone screen, which is in essence a Black Mirror when your phone is turned off. You're welcome. But David has a literal Black Mirror of his own in his crib. Completely black, and it's like it's it's so glossy, it's reflective. They call it a Black Mirror, and it's like one of those pieces where like I feel like. Someone will come in and be like, that's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever seen. Or someone will go, that is exquisite. I personally think it's exquisite. I'm placing David's toilet door at number three on the list. I know what you're thinking, a toilet door. But think again, a toilet door in a bathroom that already has a door, right? Now you're seeing how impressive that is. Most people have a bathroom door and then boom. There's a toilet, but not David. He has a bathroom door and then a door for his toilet so that someone else could be theoretically showering while he goes to the bathroom. Now that is what I call an inclusive bathroom experience. There's not much going on. Here's, uh, here's the toilet. And then on this side, I was like really scared to open it. Did you see? I was like, this is the toilet. All right, at number two, I couldn't leave this one off the list. We have David's flamethrower. And oh, this is my flamethrower here. To own a flamethrower is life goals in itself, but to actually use it inside of your house and then use it when a team of cameras are filming you on a piece about your house specifically is even more legendary. So I commend David on that. And at number one, we have the groundhog that lives in David's backyard. I'm ass groundhog in here that's eating all of it. Here's his hole and he'll come out and then when you try to talk to him, he'll bury himself. We don't negotiate with terrorists around here, so we're done communicating with this groundhog. Oh, you thought I was gonna put his Tesla or his Ferrari? or his ping pong table at number one, wrong. Because I think the most overlooked portion of his house tour was when he mentioned having a groundhog in his backyard. I mean, first of all, when was the last time you've ever seen a groundhog? Think about it. We hear about groundhogs once a year on a statistically flawed holiday where we trust an animal who's wrong more times than he is right about what the weather is gonna be. But besides that, I didn't even know that groundhogs actually existed, like as a real thing, especially not in LA. Okay, so obviously I, I knew groundhogs were a real thing. I just think it's kind of dope that he has one in his backyard. So don't judge me for putting this at number one, you know, even if it is ruining his potential pool space. Also, as you can tell, I'm not a fan of the holiday groundhog state, uh, but that's just me. Anyways, that's all I got for you in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope it was entertaining. Uh, David, if you're watching this, keep killing it. And if you're a fan of David, go show him this video or let us know in the comments down below who we should cover next, what kind of house tours we should do. If you want us to do top tens, if you want us to do interesting deep dives on anything, this channel is where we can experiment with your ideas. So let us know down below. Follow me on Instagram. You can let me know there what to cover. Dream good, live better. I hope you have a heck of a day and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.